Hello everyone and welcome to a very special Nelson's Corner. This is our first knowledge review that we're going to have. Uh, of course we have your host Mr. Nelson LeKay, uh, student Zach Parrish, myself hey. Jason Busby and this knowledge review is, is really a video that's designed for Zach's benefit as well as those out there that are learning C Sharp and maybe having a bit of difficulty with the way some of the concepts have been presented in Nelson's Corner. Not that any of the um, presentation methods were bad. They would, they would just not be considered good methods for somebody just getting into programming. Um, of course, with Zach, we're, it's, it's kind of like we're going down the interstate at about 80 miles an hour, kick the door open, and then kicked him out and screamed run. But, um, and he's doing the best he can, and, and this allows Nelson to demonstrate cool things and uh, show stuff off that intermediate to advanced developers may like as well. Uh, but anyways, we're going to kind of step back in this video. So if you are a, um, an experienced C-sharp developer, this is, this is one of those extra bonus type videos that you can just skip, though if you are new to developing in C-sharp, you may find this very beneficial. Zach is Zach's going to just lay it all out on the line and and just do some coding in this video with with what he thinks is right. Uh, again, let's all keep in mind that Zach is new to programming, so and, and he's had very little practice time and has just been kind of backed into a corner with this. And I know that's that's not always a, a whole lot of fun. Uh, well, what may end up uh, having to happen because I'll admit when I'm coding my you know stuff and I do review this stuff and mm -hmm. I, I do I do try things out. I often find myself doing Google searches a lot mm -hmm. to figure out how one thing works or review one thing, you know, this, that, or the other. Um, I may, I may or may not be able to do that here in this video. Right. So I may just end up picking on Nelson, saying, "All right, give me a hand with this, that, or the other." Yeah, and that's completely yeah. fine. So Nelson's going to um, kind of serve as a, a guide here. I, I would hope. So if if he sees you taking an approach in your design mentality or or even in how you're coming up with with something um i i hope he'd let you you know try to work it out and then say but i wouldn't do it that way and here's why mm -hmm. and see if he could nudge you into coding it the way he would like to see it uh, again this 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 video right here i don't know how long it's going to be but i i honestly feel that anybody new to developing in c sharp will find this very beneficial and by the end, Zach, I think this is going to be very beneficial to you. Well, I want to throw this out just kind of as a uh, general warning. If it starts to carry over for too long, we mm -hmm. may end up having to stop this video and come back and wrap it up later. Okay. I mean, just, just in case, because I'm not sure how long this is going to go either. Now, but Zach has a whiteboard up and available in case he wants to do any drawing, uh, as you can see here. Now, technically, the whiteboard is blue. We know this. Well, we got to continue calling it whiteboard. Yes, just because to, it's fun. Just to get under Nelson's skin a little. All right. And, um... Nelson doesn't even have a clue as to what you want it to do. Right, he doesn't. He has no idea. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm just going to build a simple console app. Uh, just to get started, we didn't play enough with WinForms for me to really feel like I am ready to just dive right into that right now. Okay. And we've been playing with console apps so much now at this point. What I want to do is create a... Uh, well, I keep calling it an army generator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have no better term for it. And if you come up with a better term, then by all means say, like, well, you should call it this. And my, uh, yeah, the pen took a second to update there. So what I want to be able to do is have a, a console that I can punch in commands, like I can add, uh, add a unit into my army, such as a, oh, let's just keep it down to three things. My army can have three different units. Uh, so I'll just take some notes real quick. It can have a warrior. It can have an archer. And it can have, uh, let's say, cavalry. So we'll keep it very simple. And each one of these, are, they're all going to have some attributes of their very own. Uh, now, you could I, when I first started playing with this idea, I realized you could take this and just run crazy with all of the different uh, you know, properties that each one of these could have. But I'm going to try to keep this very simple. Um, each one of them is going to need a name which hopefully is unique but it doesn't necessarily have to be um, they're going to have well I'd like them to have an ID that's an important one to me just so that um, no matter what they are like if I have 15 warriors and I have 16 archers each one of those is gonna have to have a unique ID so I can call on it internally if I need to 
um, and the names could repeat in that sense. Now there are other things we could add too, such as, um, and these are just kind of the important ones, but let's, we could go ahead and add a certain amount of health to them. Not that we're going to do anything with that at this point. It's just a feature, and it's going to be different for each type of class. Uh, warriors are generally going to have more health than archers, and cavalry will have more health than both of them. We'll just keep it that simple. And it, that can be something that just kind of gets hard-coded when you call on each one. I'm okay with that right now. Now, um, so what I want to be able to do is in my console, I want some basic commands that I can punch in. I want to be able to say add and then some unit. I want to be able to say delete some unit. And this is one where, I mean, I'm at least open for discussion on this because, you know, how do you want to be able to delete units? Do you want to be able to uh, delete by class, like delete all warriors? Do you want to be able to delete by an individual ID? Do you want to be able to delete by name? Uh, all of these things I think would be very uh, interesting to try to work out. And then, of course, I'd like to be able at any point to list off my army. So, list all units. And that's, that's it right now. I mean, just a very simple, very straightforward program. Do you have any questions so far, Nelson? Mm, nope. <laughs> thinking. Right. What are you thinking about? Talk to me. This is a discussion, dialogue. Stuff. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Well, we'll just start with that. Now, um, let's see. Earlier on, we, we just, all we did is I just started a new project. And you had told me something, I mean, just before we started recording, and, I, I, and I'm just going to try to bring everybody up to speed. You told me that I should always do what ReSharper tells me to do. Yes. But I don't, what is ReSharper telling me to do right now? Uh, it's telling you to delete a bunch of code. Point it out. Show me what you're talking about, because I'm not sure what you're talking about. Like right here? We yeah. see that it's saying that uh, using directives are not required right, right wait here. Hang on, I'm, I'm still in the mouse back from you. Where did it actually say that? Because like when we first opened up, I wasn't seeing where it was telling me to do well, anything. Well, it's it's gray. Whenever ReSharper says anything is gray, that means it has to go. Ah, uh -huh. gotcha. So yes. I mean, it, it just wants all of that stuff gone. Yes, but you can do it quickly by just clicking in the gray region, hitting Alt Enter, and then Enter. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's just a it's an OCD thing, I guess. But uh. It's really not necessary, and stuff like using statements will clog up your code. Well, there See? you go. So that, is that what you're looking for? Yes. All right. Well, then that's where we're going to begin. Okay, so now I'm, I don't even want to just jump into coding right away. What I want to do first is kind of go over where I think this should go in terms of what we need to code, and then you and I can talk about that, and then I'll go ahead and try to turn that all into some, some written code on the page. So here's what I was thinking. First off, we need a class that defines a unit. And for some reason, yeah, you get that top bar. There we go. Does it need to be a class? Oh, sorry, I'll do it. No, um, it can probably be a struct. It can actually, it probably also be a struct. Go ahead, you talk. So no, 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 no. Like, well, 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 uh, if you just continue with uh, everything else, I thought you said that we're going to go over the design after. So, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, you're, you're welcome at any point to to give me your insights, even even at this early stage, it's fine. We'll do some back and forth. And if I feel like uh, you're confusing me when I'm trying to get a point across, then I'll just say, hang on, let me get my thought out. But uh, if when I say I need a class that defines a unit, the first thing you say is, are you sure it needs to be a class? What do you mean when you say that? Well, I mean, does the unit actually encapsulate any behavior that needs to be represented? Or does it, does, does it just represent a contract that the rest of your program can interface with? Well, at this stage of the game, it's probably going to be the latter because this isn't really anything like a real-time strategy game at this point. It's really just a listing apparatus. Now, well, even even then, even if it had methods on the interface, my question was: Does the unit class itself need any behavior? Does it does it actually need to implement anything to be a unit? Such as, I mean, get, help me out a little bit. Well, generally, what you see with with stuff like this is people start off with you know their master god object like actor or something. I'm going to poke fun at a. Jack, just more. say it. <laughs> yeah, There's Jack. all kinds of people you could be poking fun at. Um, and then they, they put a bunch of stuff in it, like loading and saving and rendering and, and logic and stuff. And, and I really consider that to be an anti-pattern because ultimately that behavior can be encapsulated differently. Okay. Because right right now, what how I, how I view a unit, at least as far as you've gotten, is that a unit just describes two 
properties, n- name and ID. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It it even if it also c- contained methods, it doesn't actually have anything that's so complex that needs to actually be written. No code needs to be written in the unit class. All it needs to do is provide a contract to the rest of the application. Do you kind of see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. Now, um, let's let me throw this up. Maybe I'm just thinking in the wrong direction. What if I wanted to take what I'm putting together right now? And leverage it later on to work it into something like a real-time strategy game. Well, then you would have other classes that can interface with the unit objects, but they provide their own functionality. Such a, again, I, well, I have to keep saying such as just okay. such as loading right. or saving. Like for example, loading and saving an object to mm-hmm. disk. Sure. I've seen that so many times in God objects, and it's such an anti-pattern because loading and saving from disk is, is such a – it's not a concern of your game, really. It's a – that's an auxiliary concern. It's a infrastructure concern. It's not something that really belongs in a class like unit, and that's an example of something that I would – that I would be wary of putting in unit, and by making it a class, you kind of you kind of say you kind of tell the people looking at your code, okay, it's okay to put implementation details in it, but to what end? All right, but let's say we're keeping this simple. Let's say loading and saving to the disk aren't necessarily all that important to us right now. Okay, well, uh, I say Nelson, I say let him let him go on a little bit more with the design, what he's okay. got in mind, and. Um, as he's getting stuff in place, you can kind of see what he's got in his head since we can't really see in there at the moment. Yeah. And I think that'll help then with the language that you choose because you'll have more of his to use in explaining why it could be a, a bit different. All right. Okay. Well, well, then I'll just go from there. Um, so unit, you're right, is really just a definition. Uh, we should be able to, uh, to call on units in any form that we like and create different types of units from it just by specifying a different um, name ID and uh, pos- potentially a class so those classes may end up be- becoming uh, I, and I gotta be careful with class because in this in that particular case I mean class warrior class archer and maybe we should give them some other moniker instead of class because I realize that could be confusing um, anyway so yeah we could just go with him just being a definition. I'm fine with that. I'll just erase this funny little arrow. Now, I don't necessarily want the user to directly be able to to call on unit in order to make a new unit. Um, I'm not sure if I'm even saying that right. Whatever. Let me just let me roll forward and we'll just yeah, go from there. And allow me to, to tell Nelson sure. the same thing I said to you earlier. Sure. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that Zach has heard, just in all fairness, is uh, he's heard us use terms like factory uh, patterns and he's not I'm, I'm just throwing this no, out there I, actually he's, it's true I'm trying to use bits and pieces of stuff we've discussed so he, far this well we I don't think we've actually discussed factory patterns at all That's other true. than you what you've just picked up from hearing Lee and I talk yeah. or Nelson and I talk etc um, so uh, Nelson I just want it when you suddenly hear Zach if if I'm assuming that you're about to say the word factory here in a second, I probably will. Um, I just want Nelson to understand that and our viewers to understand that we've not actually covered that particular design pattern. So Zach is just going to draw upon his own conclusions on how stuff will work logically. Which is it is exactly how it kind of formulated in my head. I've heard the term factory pattern, and some really 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 vague descriptions of how it might possibly work, but I really don't know. All I know is I don't want the user to be able to. Uh, to instantiate a new unit. I want that all to be handled by another class. Do you mean a uh, user? You mean people who are consuming this class? Yes. Or, okay. Yes. I, I don't know if this is... I, see, that that could get confusing with the actual user user. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I generally, generally, I call that client code. I'm not sure if that's a proper term or something, but that's I generally... Use, I, do, I use just, client all the time. Well, okay. let me... let me Actually, let me move this box around real quick. So... Up here, there's going to be what I'm just going to call for now. Oh man, this this pens lag and feedback is just making me so happy right now. I just I don't even know how to express my happiness. So a sarcasm. unit. Say again, Nelson. Ah, uh, just in there. Okay. Yeah, that was Zach's sarcasm. Yes, a little bit of sarcasm. So shum, bump. So the unit factory is actually what is going to create our units for us. So yeah, this unit, this is just our unit definition. He's going to call our unit definition in order to make 
our our units, our actual units. Now these units are going to get stored into a list. So this is our unit list. Each time a unit is created by our unit factory, it's going to have to get stored in this list. And it is from this list that we will be able to, or with this list, we'll be able to add, delete, and list out all of our units. Cool. Okay, does so all that make sense so far? Mm-hmm. All right. Now, I am thinking just in terms of what we need to program. This is just kind of where uh, where I started. Uh, we had mentioned uh, structs, I believe, in the last video. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that had popped up that Jason had mentioned was that a struct is really just a lightweight class. Uh, I think you had mentioned that they often work really well as DTOs. Um, and that, that suggested to me that it would probably work really well, at, at least in the, in the mindset that I'm in right now, uh, to turn our unit into a struct. It's really just a definition sitting there. Um, yeah. Well, right now, see, the reason that I started talking about interfaces earlier was I was assuming you were going to actually subclass unit out into warrior, archer, and cavalry. And we can, and I'm certainly open so to the that, idea. That's, that's, uh, yeah, so I'm glad that, that you cleared that up, though, yeah. with uh, doing something else. Uh, in, in this architecture, it's a lot different than what I thought you were originally going to do. That's cool, um, and that's, that's, I guess, why it's probably more important for me to get more of my idea out before we roll forward. Uh, the, the I would probably advise against a struct in this case because your unit has an identity meaning mm -hmm. it's an entity and generally when you talk about entities um, the, the defining really high level and abstract like almost mathematical definition of an entity is an entity that can have the two two entities can have the exact same properties but not be the same okay whereas two value objects can have the exact same properties and by definition they're the same even if they're in different memory locations sure so when you kind of extrapolate that, you have to start thinking, okay, so unit is an entity because it has an identification. And if it's an entity, then it needs to be able to be referenced by a reference, meaning that it needs to be a reference type like a class. Okay. However, if you, were, if you took your unit and you decided to store him in a, on a file system or something, it that would be a better use for a struct because you're using him as a, as sort of a DTO, not as an entity. Okay. If that sort of makes sense. Enough, I think. Um, just because. No, it, it was good though that you're thinking about this as a, as a you know in terms of mm -hmm. what does it do? Does it have behavior and all that stuff? But because it has an ID, I would advise against a struct. Okay. All right. Even if it doesn't have any behavior. Well. And, okay, then we'll we'll go with that for now. So, what I should probably do is I got to start playing with my mad Photoshop skills for just a minute because I need to make a little more room here. So this unit factory um, that I was that I've got here. Okay, his whole light, his whole deal is that he's gonna take some inputs and use them to call on uh, what is now the unit class. And then the outcome of that, whatever is instantiated, the individual unit, will actually end up being stored in the list. But because we have all of these different commands that will operate on our list, um, I had envisioned there being another class kind of over this whole thing uh, that I was just in the back of my head calling an input manager. And he would be responsible for keeping track of... Uh, what did the user just type in on those read lines? Uh, did they put in add space and then some name of unit? Did they put in delete? Uh, what were the two arguments? And then uh, firing off the unit factory if needs be, if they've said add, uh, so that we can create the appropriate unit and get them stored in the list, or just um, performing whatever sort of list functionality we might need if they said something like uh, delete, or just listing off for us if we need to. Hmm. What are your thoughts on this? Um, my thoughts would be that it's actually really cool that you're abstracting it further, but I would even go as to far as to say that there should be probably one level between the input manager and your model. Uh -huh. Because this is basic... Oh, did I start drawing? Or Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to draw what you're describing. <laughs> if, if you just accidentally, if you just moved the mouse Nelson and suddenly a beautiful arrow showed up, <laughs> I would be impressed. <laughs> okay, anyway. No. Okay, so I, I see this right here as your model. This is what you're modeling. Um, the input manager doesn't really fit into the MVC, but you, I'm not. I'm not talking about MVC. I'm talking about model in its actual definition. Okay. Separate from using a full M MVC pattern, but generally, when you're working with a, a model that's complex, complex, you know, obviously this isn't complex, but it is representing multiple things. You have your factory, and you have your list, and you have your individual unit and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, generally. It, it, there's generally in code there is or in larger systems that are, not even larger systems systems that I've worked with there's something in between the user and your model and that's actually generally a controller and sometimes it's a controller and maybe another layer like a service layer or another layer like a facade layer but just having one guy in here will allow the input manager to, to be developed independent of your entire model meaning that your input manager is then simply Inter coupled to this one controller object, and this controller object then can be changed to perform its different things. Like, for example, let's say you add a new a new command in here that says add unit, then list all units. You know what I mean? Sure. sure. You would have to you would have to duplicate the add unit code and the list all units code. But if you had a third layer in here, you could just call you could just do two method calls and reuse both of your code. So you're saying something a bit more like this. Something like control. It wouldn't interface. See, the input manager would be responsible for taking input mm -hmm. and probably also printing out stuff, sure. um, depending on how abstract you want to go uh, with the view classes or whatever. But it's not really applicable right here. But um, the controller wouldn't talk to console at all. It would just get commands from input manager and it would do its thing. Uh, the, the one thing, the one reservation I have is most of these these three guys specifically are going to be represented by one method call to the controller. When you say I, these, I'm just letting hit, you know. Hit the A key, Zach. Yeah. Throw the arrow up there. Yeah, now when, he can say. When you say these, in fact, if I hit shift A, it becomes a white arrow. Yeah, now um, let him point with the mouse. Yeah, it's a little easier to point with the mouse now. Okay, sweet. Um, no, no, I just mean the commands in general. Um, right now, add unit is going to, as far as I see it, is going to call invoke unit factory. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all it's going to do. It's going to be one line of code. Yeah. Same with delete unit, same with list all units. So this controller is going to be very anemic. It's not going to, it's just going to be delegating. But the, the reason why I suggested controller um, was because you're operating with two classes here, two kind of services. You're operating with your unit list and your unit factory. And having these both contained directly with, in, composited directly into a class like the input manager, which also talks to the console, mm -hmm. um, couples, essentially couples your business logic to the console. By breaking that out into here, you're no longer coupled to the console. Right, and if we want to add more functionality, we can add it right into the controller. Yes, and then if you, it, it just gives you another point sure. I mean, of abstraction. Sure. And uh, but like I said, just a warning. Right now, the way it's working, every, there'll be a controller add unit method, and all it's going to do is called add unit on factor. And that's fine. But the, the, like I said, the only reason why I suggest this is because you have two things that you need to keep track of instead of just one. Okay. Yeah. I'm, this I'm this makes totally it. That. Your system has one point of entry right now with the controller. Yeah. All right. Well, let me let me throw this out because you said something that kind of sparked a, a point of interest. Up to this point, um, okay, again, cause all this has just been kind of how I'd pictured this code in my head based on a lot of different discussions, but it hadn't really yet occurred to me to take the unit itself and break this down into um, an interface. And then I imagine that we'd have some subclasses that would just... Uh, did utilize that interface. What's the word for it? Uh, implement. Implement. Thank you. So then those would be specifically like, oh man, thank you, pen lag. Uh, I write just a little more slowly. W looks terrible. <laughs> That's the best you can do for giving Zach a hard time. Jeez, Nelson, you fail. <laughs> I've, I've I've been pretty diplomatic so far. I think you have. I've been actually kind of floored. I was, Our I was viewers just, a lot harder. They, they, they didn't hear the uh, pre-show comments where Nelson said, am I welcome to give you a very hard time? 
But it's like right there. I wrote an L like three minutes ago, and it's, it never came through. Yeah, we probably should have rebooted it before. I mean, we've done so many recordings now without rebooting this poor machine. It's It probably needs it. <laughs> so um, are you thinking this would be a better way to handle this unit definition? Um, not if all your program is going to do is those three operations. Okay. But if you do need to ever give you some sort of behavior like a method call mm -hmm. and you want that behavior to change depending on what type of unit it is yeah then using an interface would what well, it would be the only way, besides inheritance but it would be the pretty much the only way to go about that well let's do it anyway um just and i'll probably have to get you to to lend me a hand on getting it set up uh under the uh, the global idea that if we wanted to expand on this later then we could, and it it just it, it's a nice setup that allows us to one utilize interfaces, which I think is cool, just from a, a learning slash teaching standpoint. Hell anyway. no, I'm I'm yeah, I say it's good, but I I, I like this because I, I already see some challenges that I'm going to throw at you in a little while. Sure. Once you start really getting comfortable getting things going, yeah, that uh, will indeed add functionality. I'm sure Nelson can see some uh, simple challenges to throw into. This I'm sure there's all kinds of things we could do. You'll get to feel my pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. So, so I think this might be a, a good enough place to start. Now we just need to start putting in some preliminary code, and this is where you really get to get your giggle on. Well, I, I do like, I'll just throw a comment sure, in real sure. quick. I really do like the fact that, and you did this uh, earlier today when you started practicing, and, and just to let you know, Nelson, and our viewers, Zach didn't code through the whole thing. He got started with this a couple hours ago just playing with the idea, and he spent a good bit of time just drawing on paper. And uh, that, that put a pretty big smile on my face. It, so many beginners just get in and start coding. And it's nice to have an idea, you know, down that you're going to, uh, to implement as opposed to just randomly start coding stuff and hopefully it'll all take, you know, focus. Yeah. Well, it definitely shows not least the separation of concerns, which is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, the only things I suggested were things that I just know from experience are going <laughs> to... You know. Yeah, and that's that's groovy. There's, there's it's no not something you would have been able to th think of unless you actually, you know, we're now, good. Shot yourself in the foot. Didn't suck at one point. No, are we, uh, I'm thinking that all of these are probably just going to end up being classes in their own right. I mean, it, does that seem like a reasonable thought to you? Yeah, there, there's no reason for them to be abstracted any further, really. Okay. Um, Okay, now yeah. this brings up another point, and um, it might be a little early to bring it up. Well, I guess there's probably no such thing, because this is just kind of based on some of the things we've talked about recently in Nelson's Corner. Uh, but uh, probably the input manager, uh, the controller, and the unit factory at the very least, they, and actually, it, this guy too, if he was his own class, um, they really only need to be instantiated just one time. We don't yes. really need multiple ones. So. Uh, we're going to need to build those using the singleton pattern? Um, <laughs> that's such a touchy area. And if it. if it is, that's see, fine. I, I'm see, fine I, with it being touchy. I, 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 know you're, <laughs> I know that it's cool if we find actually a good use case to show everyone. However, there's no reason, there's no technical limitation why any of these objects can't be instantiated multiple times. Sure. And there's no reason to limit that. Okay. It's kind of is, is my take on it. Why would we need multiple input managers? Well, you wouldn't. But well, then why not just go ahead, just for the sake of being able to restrict it? If but, we don't need it, why not set it up to where there's no way we can accidentally have multiple ones? The because you have to ask yourself: if there are multiple input managers, would your program not work? And the answer should be no, or I mean, yes, or whatever. It should still work. It should be no or yes. No, I'm, I'm just thinking, okay, yeah, but even if it doesn't work, don't, aren't we now dealing with the extra overhead of two input managers, which are technically not doing anything particularly useful for the program? No, 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 no true. It's just that if someone does ever want to instantiate another input manager, you just, you just kind of, I mean, I guess have to trust that they're doing it for a reason. You know what I mean? No, no I really <laughs> don't know what you mean, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, the the reason what I'm saying is is that the, there's no technical limitation here to restrict an input manager to a single object, and there's no reason for any of these classes to statically refer to an input manager. All these classes can be e really easily put together in a way mm -hmm. that the input manager gets instantiated by the main method and just 
sits there, and then the controller gets instantiated by the method uh, by the main method and gets passed into the input manager, and then the controller instantiates the unit factor in the unit list. I don't have a problem with that. The only thing I'm kind of discussing in my head is since we since we now know like what a singleton is and we know its purpose, we know what it should be there for to prevent you from being able to make multiple instances of a class that doesn't need multiple instances. This shouldn't be instance more than once. Why it's, would we it's not, not why would we not want to implement that? It's not about not needing it, it's about will it cause problems on your program for your program if there were two instances. Well, that's that brings up an interesting question that I mean I have and I'm sure it's just because I am I am a little bit new to this, but I mean at some point don't aren't you the designer responsible for being able to say in your program that you don't want there to be any more than just one input manager running or or one controller or one unit factory running at any given time or don't you have that power as the designer to say that and to implement it in that way but you do but if you, if you make this if you make these three classes a singleton pattern uh -huh. or a singleton um, you're actually going to see the controller is a composite of the unit factory and the unit list, right? Yes. Um, so that means the controller should be responsible for instantiating the unit factory and the unit list. The input manager is a composite of the controller. So that means that the input manager should be responsible for instantiating the controller. And then main is responsible for instantiating the input manager. But I don't feel like that's what I'm talking about. I feel no, like no, I, it, it, okay. because what, well, I don't think you, you're understanding the implications of the singleton pattern because you're taking the responsibility of instantiation away from your code and into a static member. Then I really did misunderstand a lot of what you were saying about the singleton pattern because I was under the understanding, as misplaced as it may have been, that the idea of it was to take a class and make it so that it was only singly instantiatable and could be accessed yes. globally from other points. But see, there's no reason to access any of these things globally. That's kind of what I'm saying. Because you can pass in the unit factor, or you can, well, you can just instantiate the controller, and the, the controller can instantiate the unit factor in the user list. The controller doesn't ever need to access the input manager, and the unit factor never needs to uh, talk to the controller. Are you sure you're not undermining the very idea of having singletons at all? I, I think I am in some... In some, to some degree, but I did actually cover some stuff in a, in a post on the forums about um, how I generally don't I don't find myself using the vanilla singleton pattern um, very often, although I do use objects that are made to be singleton, but mm -hmm. through an IOC container, which we haven't really talked about. Um, I, basically, what I'm saying is I use singletons, but usually I usually use them in a way that doesn't require me to have a static variable. Okay. And it, it's the static variables that 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 just that just really upset me. <laughs> All right. So this is kind of a personal thing. Well, it, it's personal because of the amount of time that I've wasted dealing with refactoring code that was coupled to static members. Okay. Well, we've uh, carried on for half an hour just talking about our plan, so I guess we should go ahead and move on and start trying to code something. Um. So. Jason, did I say anything wrong or really fast, Jason? I would have personally told Zach to go for it just to make sure that your uh, I may do that anyway. Over singleton did at least sink in, because I, yeah. I do have a feeling Zach's now going to be very confused as to why even have a singleton. Well, right now, I, and I didn't want to. Again, we've we've carried on for like thirty minutes just in the planning phase, and I didn't really want to do that. But if it's relevant, you know, I now know I no longer know why we even talked about singletons at all. Why would we waste a video on that? Because of the Get, oh, especially and, granted that it was your idea, Nelson. Um, it's a very commonly used word, and understanding the spirit of what a singleton is is important in communication. Cool. And it's also something that a lot of people see, and it's a thing a lot of people use. So it's definitely worth going over, and it's not very complicated. Good. So that's then, then by th by that very rationale, um, in a knowledge review, it makes sense for us to implement one. Excellent. That's decided. <laughs> Okay, so uh, now I guess what we need to do is start taking a look at these classes and getting them in. So let's just start simple. Um, we'll we'll go with what we have already on paper. Even if right now it's not doing much. Now the spacing setup on your version of Visual Studio is a little different than mine. So if I make the occasional extra carriage return or, or whatever, that's just because I feel like I should be hitting return twice and it's not working that way. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We had the controller next, so let's go ahead and just put that down. 
Okay, yeah, just one return on your machine. Gotcha. Now, let's see, where do we go from here? I'm, I'll be flipping back and forth a lot, which, I mean, if you actually had a sheet of paper you were taking these notes on, you'd be glancing over at that a lot, too. So let's call this our unit factory. And where do we go from here? Now, this is where we started to get kind of uh, interesting because we took the idea of just a unit class and we busted it out so that we had an interface that broke down into uh, three different subclasses that would implement that interface. So I may need to bug you to help me get that done because I haven't coded one of those. When I was doing my little preliminary version of this, which by the way was nowhere near as sophisticated as what we've drafted out so far, um, I didn't implement an interface. So um, let's see. Ah, can't type. So let's just call this our... That, you, uh, go ahead. Uh, just just tell me. Spat it off. Right, right. Without even saying it, naming convention when doing interfaces. We talked about that. Do you remember? No, I don't. That's that's why I was saying um, yeah, okay, I'll, no, I'll need so to get you it to, out. to bug me on that. Um, I. I. Okay. Yeah, that's that's right. I unit. Okay. Now, and we'll get, we'll get to putting in all of the interesting stuff when we get to this. So let's do class warrior, and this would be colon i unit, yeah. Oh, I think it wanted to help me there. Also, oh, groovy. Class, what was the last one I put? Cavalry? I think that's right. Cavalry. Alright, and let's see, what else do we really need here? Uh, so, we need our unit list. Now, I'll admit, the first time that I had this envisioned in my head, I didn't even picture this being its own class. Though I guess I really don't see why it couldn't be. Um, uh, God, I wish we w we'd gone over a particular pattern by now. Don't don't worry about it, Nelson. And remember, keep this simple. It's a knowledge review, and uh... mm, can I say one thing? Can I ask Zach one question? Sure, shoot. <laughs> um, are there any operations that you want to perform on a unit list that will that need to be abstracted? Such as, do you ever envision having an advanced query against a unit list? Like, do you ever want to return a particular a particular subset of units based off of some arguments? The idea intrigues me, um, especially if we got to the point where health actually meant something. Uh, so that, like, you could say, you know, um, show me all units that have fallen under sixty percent of their health or something. Yeah, the the responsibility of of writing those queries should be in its own class, and it's usually called something. I don't know if I should say the word. You could just it, say it so he's he's heard it. But yeah, I, I mean, we it, can just expose it, it. Why not? It, generally, it's called a repository. Okay, and that's that's its and, own pattern, yeah? Yes, and generally it's just a class that, that uh, encapsulates um, the querying of objects and the storing of objects. I mean, does that make it kind of like a helper class specifically for querying? Um, well, I mean, it's it's a class. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's not a helper class. It's, okay, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. All right. Well, so you could you could go with you know your I, unit repository. Yeah, I can go yeah. with that. I mean, because you already independently came up with the idea of making a class out of it. it that's yeah. exactly. Yep. It's as good a name as any. And despite the uh, the association with an actual design pattern of its own, I mean, repository still holds true in terms of the actual English usage of it, which rarely happens in programming. So I'll go with it. <laughs> All right, uh, so we have the skeletons of what I'm pretty sure is everything we really, really need at this point. Now, where we go from here is, I mean, I realize that's kind of up to us. And what I'd like to do is go ahead and get the interface out of the way and then get all of our classes out of the way. And you'll have to forgive me. I'm actually a little rusty on creating these interfaces. Um, basically, just define members without bodies. Um, 
and without a public or protected or any access qualifiers because everything is implicitly public. Okay. Um, so really what I need are the properties for things like uh, name and ID. And we could throw health in there just for the fun of it if we wanted to. Yep. Okay. Um, so it's define them as you would a normal automatic property. Right, 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 right. That's what the syntax is. But remember, it looks like an automatic property, but it's not because interfaces don't contain implementation. Gotcha. Okay. So this would be name. And do we need the getter and setter? I'm trying to remember. You need to specify if the implementing classes need to implement a getter or setter. So, I mean, and now you have to you have to ask yourself: Should anybody be able to edit the name outside of a union? Um, well, I mean, should, we've, we've got to be able to set it when we instantiate the thing. Right, but after that, should anybody be able to directly mutate that state? No. Okay. Not that and I then think of. I mean, not in terms should, of the name, anyway. Okay. And then, should anybody be able to read the name? Yes. Okay. So you should put a getter, but not a setter. Okay. And to do that, you yeah, you just do the automatic property syntax with a just a get, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then let's see. For an ID, I always want to fall back on an int. And. Um, this doesn't ever really need to be changed either, but we're going to need to be able to get it. So we'll go in the same direction for now. Uh, uh, uh. If you have a thought, fire it out. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> come on, come on. You, you, you have to pay attention to the squigglies, dude. All right, I see the squiggly. Let's see, what is it griping about now? It does not match the rule methods, properties, and events. Oh, okay, they're looking for a lowercase <laughs> d. Um, let's see. Uh, well, I gotta get used to all of Nelson's noises. So apparently, uh, 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 means that his OCD has been triggered on something, <laughs> and that I should see to that. <laughs> it's kind of like when you leave the kettle on for too long. All right. So uh, the last thing is gonna be health, and um, we could do a double for that, so that we could have a uh, a health that falls into a decimal point if he ends up eventually taking some form of damage. I mean, we could leave it an integer, but I don't really feel like doing that. Um, so. Elf. Now, this would need a getter and a setter, I would think, because... Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this, this gets into a topic of OOD we haven't talked about yet. So, uh, uh, well, Actually, we already did, so I can't say this. Um, mutating the health outside of an operation on a unit uh -huh. is dangerous, because then the unit can no longer provide its own sort of thing. It can no longer decide how it wants to handle that. Yes, I know you can put the behavior in the setter, okay. um, just as you normally do. However, what if you want to mutate the state of the health in an operation that isn't called set health? Maybe it's take damage, and then the, um, and then the class itself figures out how it calculates that damage. By allowing people to alter or mutate the state of health outside of itself, you're basically inviting people to to mutate what should be private. I just kind of have to go with that. <laughs> I mean, at, at this stage of the Fair game, so, since we're not really putting that behavior in, now, if we were to a point where I was trying to put in some sort of damage code and some playability features that caused our units to take damage or, and, and or be able to be healed or die or anything like that, then I might be able to grill you a little more easily on, on all of that. But, but, the, but uh, I'm, I'm going to back Nelson up on this one. That's fine. Health is definitely one you would not want to expose for anybody external to the unit itself to manipulate. Okay. Because then it becomes very dangerous because anybody could then manipulate yeah. that health. Uh, take damage is actually the name of methods I've used in some of the Unity games we've done. Yeah. So when you tell that that character to take damage and you've given them, you know, whatever it is they're going to take for taking damage or determine if damage needs to be applied, you can then do the unit itself, the character itself, can then take a look at perhaps all of its gear or, mm -hmm. or whatever and affect its own health based off of whatever kind of um, algorithm you've set up. Um, but externally, for someone just to say, uh, that mage, his health is now zero. Yeah, okay. It, it's just, that's... Sure, dangerous. you you want that to be controlled by actual game based influences, and not just by being able to yeah, set you, the value. Yeah, you want that to be controlled by him and by his logic inside, behavior. as opposed to just saying because by putting that public setter there, mm -hmm. you're saying 
it, it's real easy to just look at it and say, well, the, the spell system could determine the what to set his health to. Sure. But but look at it in a different way. You're saying anyone can set this health to whatever they want. Gotcha. Very dangerous. I, I'm with you. I, I see what you're saying. Okay. And, and Nelson, just understand when when I explain things, I try to 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 put it into as simple of speak as I can. So try not to have any fits with some of the things I say. It's just to help get Zach to say I understand a well, lot quicker. And, and not to make this any more complicated than it needs to be, because I know we're not really getting into um, game behavior, game style logic, that sort of thing here. But like, let's say we did want to be able to uh, at least affect the health, and each unit is going to have to be able to do that. So it seems like in our interface, you would need some sort of a uh, a method that was something like take damage. Sure, I have um, no problem with that. And I mean, because you'd want to make sure that every damage, every every unit could take damage, I mean, or perhaps you could have another interface called uh, I damageable. Yeah, but but what really quickly before you type a semi, sure. before you type a semi, uh -huh. because it's probably going to fix it for you. Uh -huh. um, yeah, you're missing something on line twenty-two. On line twenty-two, okay. Uh, it's on there. It's on there. Yeah. No, Thank you. No. <laughs> Seriously, that was it? OCD is awesome. Yeah, it really must be. Okay, is that is that all I needed? Is that all you're yeah, 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 Okay, yeah, yeah. good. As long as you're happy, then I'm happy. I, I was also going to have you put the ID at the top, but, uh, yeah, never mind. You know, just say it, Nelson. You you can be upfront with me. It's all good. It, it, generally, I put identity um, properties at the top. I mean, just out of convention, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're you're playing the role of mentor, so I don't mind absorbing some of your habits unless I think they're stupid, and then I won't. <laughs> awesome. um, all right. So let's see. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna put this in, and then whether or not we actually utilize it. Now, of course, we're gonna have to implement it for anybody who's implementing our interface. I understand that, but whether or not it does anything when it gets there, that's beside the point. Good. I'm just glad to hear what you're saying because you're demonstrating that you're starting to understand how some of this stuff works. Um, now I just got to figure out what this is all griping about. Yeah, don't don't say anything, Nelson. Let him. Um, well, I mean, think of what the interface's job is to do. It's, well, it's just to specify a contract. I mean, are we looking for a return type here? I mean, well, you've got a return hang on. type. Well, what what do we got? What do we got? Property type cannot be void. Well, okay. So what can it be? Uh, it, it's misinterpreting what you're trying to do. You're trying to give. Go ahead, Nelson. Uh, well, it, hang on. What is, all right, no, I'll, I, I, I know how to say yeah. it. What does a method look like? Let's say you were implementing a method. Is that line 24 right if you were actually implementing a method? Let's not even pretend we're in an interface. I mean, I'm, I'm actually trying to remember. I'm, good, I'm good. drawing a blank. Outstanding. Well, a lot of the red just went away. Now let's see what that let's red see, is. Interface, ca interface method cannot declare Bingo. a body. Oh, it doesn't need these. That's right. Okay, I'm just so used to them being there. See Nelson, and I was then just, it's just looking for. There a you go. I was looking for a way to kind of have yeah. Re Sharper tell him. Gotcha. All right. Well, we'll like I said, we'll put that there, and then if you know, we'll implement it. It won't necessarily do anything yet, but if we want to use yeah. it later, then groovy. Okay. That, as far as I can tell, is everything we're really going to need in this interface. So uh, we need to make sure that all of this same stuff gets implemented in each one of our individual classes. Now, does this mean I can start copy pasting code? <laughs> That's fine. Tell me no, but but don't don't throw up into your mic or anything. Um, there you go. Uh, do you want to see a magic trick? No, I, I want really you to... I really don't unless I understand how the magic trick actually works. Because magic always kind of suggests a sense of mystery, and mystery is exactly what I'm trying to do. Click right with. where your mouse is. Uh huh. Implement members. Oh, you're you're kidding, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, seriously? <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, is there anything I need to change here? E well, because because I haven't done this honestly. When I when I drafted out my original prototype, I wasn't using this particular means. What I was doing was my uh, my factory was calling on was specifically calling on the unit class and then feeding in some information to make our different types of units. I wasn't subclassing out like this via an interface. So I'm a, I'm a little, I'm in deeper water than I was before, and I'm okay with that, but I will bug you and say, all right, hang on, get, give, me, give me a hand and help me get up to speed. Well, every time that you allow ReSharper to implement members, it's just going to put some implementation in, in this case, just throw in an exception, uh, not implement it. 
exception. So yeah. you can, you and you'll see Nelson do this all the time. And he just goes in there and deletes all those gits out. And, or, or well, uh, hmm? uh, nothing. See, you can actually get, the, the next one I'll show, uh, I'll show um, Zach something. Okay. And the next guy. But, yeah, so, yeah, what were you doing, Jason? Or? Nothing, I'm, I'm just going to be quiet at this point. This, this is good for Zach, I think. Well, see, I'm act I'm actually now at a loss. I really have no idea where to go from here. Well, what is ID? What is name? What is health? They are. They're properties. Properties. Yeah. And with properties, that. we can use automate it. We talked about it in a recent review. Automated I mean, we talked properties. about automated properties, sure. But I mean, it's like so, and that's more like what we were doing up yeah, here. Yeah. So yeah? why can't you do what's up there? But, but remember, this up there is just a special syntax for interfaces. This down here actually gets the C-sharp compiler to write code for you, essentially. I mean, so that's yeah. valid, yeah? Uh, no. 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 Okay. So um, <laughs> when, when, you're, when you're in a class doing this syntax, yeah. the actual automated property syntax, as opposed to this syntax, which looks the exact same, but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's that you're declaring a, a, a property. Um, or you're... Yeah, you're declaring it. Um, you have to have a setter on this one. You always have to have a setter. Hmm. Okay, I mean, that's good to know. You, but uh, but again, though, that now you've given it, even though the setter isn't a part of the interface, meaning if they're talking mm -hmm. to the warrior through iUnit, because this guy up here only has a getter, yeah. then they won't be able to set it. But if they ever talk to this unit as an actual warrior object... Now they can set this ID, which I don't think you want to do. So you should change its accessibility. Oh, okay, let me try that. There um, you go. You got it. Yep. I mean, it's, uh, no, wait, I got squigglies, and I don't want to freak you out, so let me make sure I know what those are all about. Uh, it's never that's just... used. Okay, that, and I know it's never used, at least right now. Exactly. Right. All right, um, so let's do this. And then I'm just going to cheat. Because there's just too much to type here. And then I'm going to nuke some stuff out. And then we'll... Is that everybody already? Yeah. Well, yep. I don't need that then. We'll take these guys out. And... I don't necessarily... I mean, I guess I should just... Do I even really want that to throw an exception? Or should I just leave it just like that? Well, you're not even going to see it as long as no one ever calls it. That's true, it. as long as we don't but call it. But you do have fine. a, before you move on from properties to methods. Um, yeah, more well, squiggles, I've got some, I've got some more ends squiggles. here. Right, right, and I'm getting to those. Um, uh, where's your delete key? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in, a, in addition, um, whenever you see... Uh, okay. What? Never mind. Speak. <laughs> yeah, ReSharper could have done that for you, but I'm yeah. sure it could have. I'm just not used to using ReSharper yet, and at this stage of the game, with a, with all the coding experience I have under my belt, which is extensive, I assure you, it's probably better for me to actually code a few things before I start relying too heavily on ReSharper. Okay. All right. Um, now, this all looks really useful. Hmm. Okay, because you're just going to copy and paste it again, I, I, I do need to show one thing oh. that I don't think we did in the ReSharper review thing. Please. But if you click back, back on Calvary, uh -huh. and then you go to its uh, little icon guy, mm -hmm. implement members, mm -hmm. uh, you can set the uh, properties. If you hit properties as, ah. you can set them uh, automatic property. Oh, cool. And then finish, and that does all that for you. Well, that's pretty cool. It's actually very nifty. All right. Well, I mean, that was almost as fast as copy pasting, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see. On mine, I have it automatically set to that, so I could just hit um, Alt Enter Enter. Yeah. So it is faster, at yeah. least. Gotcha. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Always. All right. So um, let's see. Now we let's see. We've gone through our interface. We've gone into each one of our individual, uh, you know, unit classes that implement that interface. And so my head tells me the next thing we should go is to uh, the factory, which is actually going to produce these guys for us. So I guess that's where I'm going to go. Now, um, 
what we're going to have to do here, this is going to be based off of inputs that are coming in from the controller. This tells me we're going to need to be able to, and forgive me, if I start slinging out words that are incorrect, that's fine. You feel free to correct me on the way, but we're going to need to have some sort of parseability. We're going to have to know what commands just got sent in so we know what to do from here. Um, so we know whether to call on create a uh, an archer, create a warrior, create a cavalry. And I suppose in the end, what we really need are some methods that call on each one of those. Now, let me ask you this, because I mean, we're we're getting into the functionality here. If we're going to create a method that will make a unit, I in my head, my, the first place that my brain wants to go, just reflexively, is to create individual methods for like a method for create warrior, a method for create archer, a method for create cavalry. And then some other little conflicting part of my other shoulder says we should create a, you just have like a create unit that just calls on the proper class. Um, you, see, uh, you see what I'm saying? I, I, I have the same, the same thing. I, I was actually envisioning like the first thing you said, just create unit, create warrior, create blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, or you could factor it out into like an uh, enumeration, which we haven't really talked about. Or you could pass in magic strings, which you shouldn't do. Um, so the, really, the best the best way to handle this would be with the three methods, and that really doesn't. Yeah, that that's not the worst thing in the world. Okay. That doesn't set off my OCD, so All right. that's not terrible. Jason, I agree. Okay. Well, we'll just go with that then. Now, I'm trying to think. I mean, ha I can. However, however, I, I just want to say one thing. Yeah. Uh, right. As your your cursor's right there. Um, remember that the public interface of Unit Factory, mm -hmm. e even if the method's called Create Warrior, and you know what that's going to do, yeah. it shouldn't return a warrior. Uh, that's exactly what I was kind of fighting with in the back of my head was whether this should just be void or whether <laughs> it should be something. I mean, can we return an I unit? Maybe. I mean, that seems. It seems like if we need access to that when we call the command, so that maybe we could, you know, I don't know, put it in a list or something. Uh, it might be useful if we could return it when the method was finished. Yes. I mean, so I'll, the, I'll just go with it. But I mean, yeah. here, here's what I was kind of getting at. If we're, um, if we're doing this, here, here's my question. As I'm still steadily working, with, should we be returning a warrior? Mm -hmm. No, no. See, the thing is, the unit factory abstracts those classes away from the rest of the system. It's the only person who knows that warrior exists. Mm -hmm. And so you want to keep it that way by not polluting its public interface, public interface being its public methods. Okay, I'm fine with that. So um but you No 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 using using the words create warrior is fine. Yeah. But using the word create warrior is different than returning the class. Okay, right. But here here's where I'm just going. Um could we not and you're welcome to say sure we can but we shouldn't. Um what if we had uh, string. This is what he which, meant by the magic string. Which we'll call class, and then this got fed in based off of us reading what we put in. Because, I mean, in the end, I just need like a blank little area here. We're going to be typing something like add warrior. And so we're going to need to parse out this from the add command anyway. So, I mean, can we not yes. say, all right, well, the add command was there, the second part of it was warrior, so we can feed that into create unit, and based on what we find, we can create the proper, uh, the proper type of character. You, what you, because uh, hmm. in terms of not creating, um, basically, see, in, in terms uh, of not creating the same method over and over again with just different names, that kind of does. I mean, really, it's just going to call in different I, classes. I would honestly suggest creating the three methods right now because uh -huh. yeah, why yeah. why Nelson is struggling is there's actually several ways we can do this with a single method. Sure, but um, but they all go outside of what we've covered with you. Okay, that's fair enough. I think Nelson could then later use your example to demonstrate how we could have. I I can't argue with that. Is that okay with but, you, Nelson? Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. Um, that's cool. So, but see, here here's the cool thing, Zach. You said that these three methods are going to be identical, more or less. And oh, they they're definitely going to be identical. But what they represent are three completely distinct operations. Because what if your warrior class needed additional stuff? done in the factory level then you have a place to put it right. so it's it's not it's not useless duplication you're actually representing three different operations even if they're the same mm -hmm. um, philosophically they represent three things 
I see what you're saying. I'm just saying that my first impulse was to go about it that way because any of the really important stuff could have been buried inside each individual class, like the warrior itself. Yeah, but yeah, I see true. what you're saying. It's. I mean, I I can easily see that it's just two different ways to go about the the problem. It's just, uh, and that that was the only reason I turned it into a question was because I could see both ways. I wasn't sure if there's one way that I should go for what we've got going on or what your thoughts were on that really if nothing else all right so again i'm just going to be lazy and this will become create archer and create cavalry and it seems like all these guys are really going to do is create they're going to oh, let's say hang on let's do var um, uh, I'll just say under lowercase warrior for now equals new warrior and what's the, what's the, the gripe here what am I doing oh, is it, oh yeah of course it's got the little open close at the end and then return warrior I mean uh, don't worry. Don't say anything else, Nelson. <laughs> Just hang okay. tight, because this you can get him around to this shortly with what you're thinking. By oh, it's cool that you guys know what each other are thinking. Nudging him into that, you know what I mean. I, I like I like trying to have Zach discover these things just through hints. Mm. Uh. What you're hitting, but don't hit it. I'm not hitting anything. No, I'm talking to the computer. I'm just griping. And I have no excuse because my keyboard actually does have letters. Uh, let's see. Return. Um, cavalry. I don't like the red squigglies, but maybe you do. You know, I actually did. It just made me happy there to see them. All right. <laughs> so, okay, this looks like it would do exactly what I need it to do, really. And then we can let the controller determine which of these we're going to call. Now, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not seeing any errors. So did you guys have some thoughts on this? Because there was a little bit of playful banter. I don't, I don't even want to get into the thoughts yet. Okay. I, have, I have my own reason for it. I mean, will we be getting into those thoughts in this video or future videos? No, we'll get into them in this video. I mean, just so I know the scope I, of I wanna how see, bad the problem I want to see your design process and kind of what you're putting together with the sure. overall, with, with the grand picture, the big picture here. Sure. And I don't think we need to tell you our thoughts yet, because I'm sure Nelson's thinking exactly what I'm thinking. Well, okay, and then I... If everything's fine from here, then I'll let, I'll worry about that later. Yeah, you're fine. I'll, I'll worry about it when you guys tell me to, to worry about it. I don't see it. any squiggly here's, here. Here's the problem that I'm already coming into, and I, I was thinking on this problem earlier on because, again, in my original prototype, I hadn't considered abstracting this out into a controller class. What I had going on was the input manager was going to literally grab a read line, and it was going to split that based on the space and then that's going to give you two parts. If it gives you any more than two parts or any less than two parts, then I was actually going to throw back an exception because there's got to be two parts. There's got to be your command and then your argument. Uh, so if you're going to do add, there's got to be a warrior. If you're going to delete, there's got to be something fed back as well. Um, so I'm trying to wrap my head around exactly who should be doing what part of that battle. Um, you see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. See, the input manager, the, the name itself is great. It, it it's manager's input. It parses input. Right. And then it, it's kind of like a, a view, I guess you could say, but not a view because it's not really presenting anything. It's really just taking input because it's an input manager. Mm -hmm. um, so the input manager is responsible for distilling the will of the console dot read line into a method call that is performed on a controller. That's how I, I see it anyway. I'm, and, I, and I'm cool with that. I think what I'm giving up, what sir, I'm sir. what I'm steadily getting at that, that has me confused is it almost seems like these exact same methods to some degree, I mean something very close to them would already be right here in the controller an input manager would call them. It's like I'm having a hard time figuring out why we really need the controller class I think is what I'm really steadily working my way toward. Okay, who is responsible for instantiating a warrior and then putting it in a repository? Well, nobody yet, because we haven't coded any way to do that. 
But but, but wh- wh- who do you think? I mean, wh- in hmm. your mind, what's your design? Who who would you want? Well, actually, to be dead honest, at this point, I had written off the the aspect of actually adding it to to the repository. So, okay, I mean, well, just based on the direction you guys are now saying, that would have to be the controller. Um, originally, what I had done is the input manager was actually handling that, but I can see where that's a problem. Eh, I mean, I'll just I'll just keep rolling. Okay, well, we, we've done this whole kind of backwards thing so far. So I guess the next level up that we'd come to is the controller. So the controller's job is going to have to be to take in some input that the input manager is going to have to parse out. So the, the user, the, the person sitting on the end, whatever, they're going to type in a command. They're going to type in an argument. The input manager is going to make some sort of sense of that, figuring out what command they put in, what arguments were included with that command. And based on that, they're going to send some some sort of command down to the controller level. So the controller's got to do something. Now he's got to figure out what the controller's got to do. He's going to have to call on unit factory. Uh, yep. And then he's going to have to call on one of these specific methods within unit factory and then take the result of that and store him inside of our list. It also seems like he's going to be the guy who's going to need to instantiate our list itself. We haven't even created that list, but we can go ahead and, and go there. But... Well, let's just. No, 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 yeah, yeah, that was great. Okay. Um, so let's just do this then. Um, uh, not var, var. Now, why doesn't it let you do a var at this? Do you have to have this inside of a method? Is that what the problem is? Because there. Uh, yes. Oh, that's kind of what I thought. All right. Well, so let's just do a method called. Um, No, we didn't call it a list. What? What's your problem? Mm, you're putting it in a method, but it feels like that in order for the controller to perform all of its operations, it needs that list, meaning that you want to guarantee it's always constructed, or, or it's always constructed as part of the controller. And in order to guarantee it's that... It's going to need to be in the constructor, then. Uh, yeah, I sort of, sort of slipped up with the word there, but yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, as long as I get what you're what you're meaning, then the slip ups are irrelevant. Um, let's see if I can remember how to do this. And here we can say var. What did we name that class anyway? We called it the unit repository. All right. New unit repository. All right, now he's there. Now, the unit repository is going to contain the list, so when he gets instantiated, we can have his controller actually create the list, yeah? Does that make sense? His constructor. His constructor, thank you. Yep. Yeah. yep. All right, make sure constructor creates our list. That way I remember um, to do that later. Metric trick, to do. Put the words to do, all caps, then colon at the beginning of that. Instead of the No, no, comment? after the no, no, no. comment. After that, yeah. Okay. To do. No, not to do. Colon, space. There you go. Oh, cool. I mean, why? Uh, it's purple. Oh, okay, because it's purple. Awesome. And it shows up in the right hand bar, too. Oh, groovy. All right, well. So, uh, we need to... This seems like the controller is really just going to be a series of if statements. I mean, that's, that's what I keep getting. Um, mm-hmm. Hums don't mean anything to me. I would... I, I think we're in a, a, a place now, Nelson, where we need to let Zach go ahead and code this out. Okay. Just the way he wants to. Mm. I think it would mean more to him with what you've got if he goes ahead and just implement yeah, okay. his design in his mind and then we talk about another way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Um, so, yeah, feel free to use if statements or however you want, Zach. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. That's all. Because, like I said, when uh, the one time I did prototype this out, which was really only a few hours ago, and it wasn't even completely finished, I didn't have this class. I understand. I understand. So I, I f- I'm just I know kind you're of really, really on the spot here. No, it's fine. I'm just trying to, to think about how I want to do this. Um, so... 
mean, in the end, all I know for certain is that he needs to be able to call on our unit factory. And then down to each individual uh, type of unit. So let's see. Because um, where I keep wanting to go, for right or for wrong, for good or for evil, is this guy just winds up having a series of methods which in and of themselves just call on each one of these and then take the result and, and turn it back. So uh, screw it. I'll just go ahead. Public. Uh, I'm trying to think if this guy really needs a return type. I don't really think he does because he's going to grab the return of our individual method and then do something with that. But and let's say it has one anyway. Mm. Nelson, don't. Sorry, sorry, I'm not, I'm not. Don't make a uh, second I, guess here. Let him work through it. Yeah, I mean, if um, if you're not going to speak, then don't make noise. It's just as bad. Okay. <laughs> just hang in there. Let's let him work through this out loud. Um, it's good that he's talking out loud. Is what he's thinking. Well, okay. We don't need to return it to this level. Let me just go with the void for now, and then we'll just say. Um, I'll be really verbose. Create and store warrior. And I need to create several of these, so let me copy paste. I mean, we were we mentioned earlier that we were trying not to pass in any strings, because I mean, again, I, I keep thinking, you know, we could just have a create and store unit and then take in whoever we resulted from when we parsed out all of our commands from the input manager, but let's say we don't do that for now, because we didn't do it down here, we might as well not do it up here either. And store cavalry. Okay, so let's see. Now we could have var and we know this is going to make a warrior, so I'm just going to call it my warrior for now. And he's going to be... I need to call specifically on that method. And again, this is something I don't do and haven't really had a chance to do, but let me just take a real random stab at it. Um, probably won't do what I want it to, but... And eh, doesn't want to do this. Yeah. Cannot access the non static method. Alright, well, the least you guys can do is help me out as I'm implementing my design here. Um, so, I mean, do I need to make these static? Uh, you. Because here's, I, the here, here's the, I do not know how to call on this method. By instantiating a unit factory. All right, that's what I thought. You don't have an object to talk to. Okay. And if All you're right. going to talk to a class directly, the class has to be static. All right. Or the method. Yeah. Or property. Unit factory dot create warrior. No. What's the problem? Can I assign a method type group to a type? implicitly type local variable. So we need this needs to be what? And I unit? No. Scroll up. Look at your um look at your constructor for the controller. What are you doing there? Line fourteen. I'm instantiating a new unit repository. Why are you doing that? Uh, so that he will get called, and then later on in his constructor, he'll actually be creating our list so that we can plug something into it. Okay. So notice how you're making an instance that you can work with? Sure. Don't you need an instance of a unit factory somewhere? Mm. Well, I mean, we can make one up here, too. Okay, go ahead and do that. Um... Good, but bad, and why? I don't know. Um, 
let's see, because I keep thinking. I mean, I, I could just make up an answer. But uh, how about this? Tell, d define for me what scope is. You don't know. If you don't, that's cool. Uh, it, no, I don't. Let's just go with that. Variables that you declare inside of a method can they be read in other methods? So if you do int x inside of your constructor and set x is 15, in some other method, can you see that x? Not within the same class, I assume? Within the same class. I guess not. I mean, no, you cannot. Okay. Scope. It's outside of the scope. So how would you put something in that class that would be within scope for all of the methods in that class? I mean, aside from making it public... Global. It doesn't have to be public. It can be private because everything in that class, properties or just plain out, just regular fields. Oh, I, I think I see what you're saying. Maybe. You, um, you even did this when you were prototyping earlier. Not in this way. It, uh, yes, in this way. Mm. In the unit, you had name, health, stored as regular members right there. Did you not? But I wasn't storing a class. No, 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 no. But you were storing a type, an int, a uh, unit repository. Those are types, though. I'm right. I mean, all right. they're just all different types. Um. So now you're outside of methods, so you can't use var. So you need to be explicit. Um, factory and. Um, let's just go with. I I don't know. This should be lower or uppercase. That'll tell you. What's the problem now? Okay. Just bear with me. Don't let me frustrate you. No, too no, no. Much you're, it's fine. It's I'm fine. just going to start back process. into the way that I, same way I taught programming classes in the past. What do you want to do with this line? Without worrying about syntax, what do you want to do? I just need a unit factory that I can talk to. You need to, no. You want to hold a reference. To a unit factory. Do I even have a unit factory yet? Has Not one yet. Of, has but one you even need, been instantiated? But you need a place to store a reference to one. Sure. So that anywhere in these methods, you can talk to that guy. So. Okay, hang on, hang on. Okay. Unit factory equals. Let me just go with this for a minute. Uh, let's tack with the blue squigglies. I'll deal with this in a minute. New unit factory. And what are, what are you griping about? It's not private. And, okay, this is where we should get into the, the caps bit. All right, now, what's wrong with this? Well, the, the biggest problem that I have mm -hmm. is you've made it public, so anybody else who instantiates your controller can jack up your... My unit factor. So that's not how we're going to get past the problem of this guy not being able to uh, see if it. If you make this, this private, uh -huh. all of these methods inside this class can see him because okay. they're all in that. They're okay. all encapsulated all right. in that class. That's all, all. That is is my Mel days biting me. That's really. Those squigglies are back. I'll deal with that in a minute. What now? Never used. There's two problems here. Yeah, that, I'm talking about the second one. Yep. Yeah. I, let me explain. There. There you go. I mean, really, I'm just going with what it tells me. It says the suggested name is lowercase. And, right, it's, fine. and, it's, and it just goes back to the convention. If you make it public, uh -huh. then it needs to start with a capital. If you make it a private member, then it needs to start with a lowercase. Mm -hmm. And then here we should be creating a warrior. Field can be made read only. Do I need to worry about that? Uh, it, it's not important right now, but it, it is a design thing that I think I mentioned you, sometime you I mean, in if, passing. I mean, wouldn't it just be like, uh, well, I mean, if you could spell properly, mm -hmm. and it would just be like that. Look at that. You yeah. managed to shut ReSharper all the way up. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Okay. So in terms of the design that I've been trying to, to cobble together here, I mean, is this is this what you had in mind? Are we on the level now? You're talking to me? I'm talking to Jason. Yeah, no, talk to Nelson. You, you've got a reference to, you did not have a unit factory before. Yeah. We have, all right, I'm going to, if you don't mind me abstracting this for a moment to our world. Sure. 
We wanted a Ford car manufacturing plant to produce us cars. All we had was a set of blueprints. Yeah. And you were trying to tell those blueprints. You were just standing over them looking at them saying, give me car. Yeah, I'm actually with you. So now you've constructed yeah. a plant that you can turn around, as you've already done on line 23, and say, give me a car. And, and, but you had to instantiate it. So. I think what – I'm trying to reach back to, to what I did before. I think what might have thrown me off was mm -hmm. that in, in the last time, with at least the, the factory class, I had uh, set up a singleton. Mm -hmm. Which was already done at this point and hasn't been done here. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to just call on the reference for it. I, I was able to just get its instance back. Mm -hmm. And I should have at least done something like that here. And I didn't do that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I had no problem with you exercising what you've been taught over the last few days. I mean, well, but, we, but, we could go back down to the factory and we could turn it into a single But the thing. key thing is that you need it to actually have a factory object right. out there that can do stuff. Right. I mean, if we really wanted to. Let's see. For a singleton, there's a few things that we need. We need, uh, we need a property that we can use to see if it's been instantiated. Just something we can check against. I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to call this off the top of my head. We need it. an interface to the outside world that the outside world can utilize, which is going to be your property. Yeah. Because it's something you're going to expose publicly. Yeah. And think of that as an interface, not in the sense of we're implementing an interface, but in the sense of clients that utilize this have something that they can interface mm -hmm. with, that they can talk to. Now, Nelson, you're the, the mentor here. I, I just want to make sure I'm not saying anything that's frustrating you in any way. And that's going to want me to make yeah. that. Um. No, no, that's fine. You, you, just, you just know how I feel about the singleton patterns. I, so we, we covered it to death. We covered it to death last, last video. Yeah, let me go so and just put it in anyway, and then later on if we want to say, like, well, I wouldn't do this, we, we, we can take that as red. We know that you wouldn't do this. Um, and that's fine. Uh, I just want to make sure that I remember to do this. Now, this also needs a private constructor. And do we already have a constructor in this thing? I need to double check. I don't think we did. We didn't. Okay. So, private. I have absolutely no okay. problem with Zach exercising what it was <laughs> that he learned how to do. Then and if in Zach's design he says there should never be more than one unit factory by anybody, I understand where you're coming from, Nelson, but Zach's a long ways from getting to that level, um, which, which will simply just come with a lot of experience. Yeah. Um, now we need a method that we can use to double check and see if this thing has been instantiated. If it hasn't, then we need to instantiate it. I know, Nelson, that when we talked about the singleton, you had a really cool trick that you used with the double question mark operator. I do not remember how to do that. Off the top of my head, but I can piece. Sharp will do it for you. Well, okay, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> uh, hang on. Let me private. Um, uh, I'll just go with avoid. I don't think this needs a return. To oh wait, it does need a return type. We need to return. Who are you returning that to? Whoever asks. Um, Whoever <laughs> asks. You, since you made it private, the only people that can ask right, are people, just people in the inside factory. the class. I see. I don't remember if this should be public or private. I'm winging it. I well, figured I had a 50-50 shot. To, uh, to, to not try to remember rules, but to just think about it kind of like common sense, do people outside the unit factory need to be able to talk to this? Yes. Then it has to be public. Yeah, that makes sense. If it's not public, they cannot talk to it. Right. No, that makes sense. makes sense. All right. And uh, I'm trying to – let me go with void, and if I need to change that, I will. Let's just not worry about it. What are you griping at now? I mean, really? Oh, yeah, gotcha. Um, I guess I can just name this something else. Because that's all you're going to be doing anyway. Speak. It's okay. Don't no. Don't worry about it, Nelson. Let him. Let him code just a little bit more. Okay. A lowercase. That's why this could actually be K. 
capitalized if we wanted it to be. Yeah, see, by having that reference up above that member public. Yeah, nobody else needs to talk to this ever. Anybody could have just screwed yep. with it. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I can just say. I'm trying to remember if we actually need our own little version of instance in here. I think we do, but I really don't. I'm drawing a blank. Okay. All right. Let me help you out here. Yeah. You've got a private constructor. Yeah. That means nobody externally can create an instance of this. Right. So you're wanting to make a public something. What are you wanting to make a public? Y you've got an instance there. You've got a public method. Well, hang on. I know what this needs to do. Okay. Uh, it's just the, it's the syntax of getting it done. Talk to me. It what? needs to be able to check and see if this class has been instantiated. If it's not, if it's null, we need to instantiate it. If it is, then we need to return the instance that we've got. Okay, problem number one, check this out. That is what's known as an instanced method. Mm. What does that mean? Oh, I you have two kinds that's of... That's too of vague. Sorry. No, not at all. You have um, a static method. Yeah. You have an instanced method. A static method can be, if it's public, can be accessed from the outside world, not through an instance of the class, but by just talking to the class, unit factory dot, and then the name of the right, public Right, so I need set. a reference to it. If it's an instanced method, that method is only accessible on an instance of unit factory. So you've got an interesting problem that you're creating here, which is you have an instanced method so you can only talk to it if it's an instance of the whole class, but you can't get an instance of the whole class because you've sealed you've off You've actually the lost me. It's okay. No, but it's, it's, it, it's fine. You just, um, so it, what it boils down to is I don't remember this third, uh, That's fine. this third part of the recipe. You need something that is available to the outside world. See, Nelson, this actually is valuable because it just, you say it was beat to death. I say not so much. Well, so uh, hang on. Go ahead. Because Zach's not the only one that was confused. There were there was comments on the site as well. But in this case here, the bottom line is you made a private constructor to seal off anyone from outside making this class. Mm -hmm. You're solid with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But you need somebody from the to outside world to be able to say, I need this guy. Mm -hmm. But this guy, the unit factory, needs to handle his own instantiation, his own creation. So you have to do that outside the concept of an instanced object. You're doing it from a class level. So you need a static member here, a public static. That always throws me up. And instead of setting up a method, mm -hmm. you could just simply have a property. Okay. Then I, I then I see what's got me confused um, because I'll, I'll admit while I understood the concepts and whether or not certain amongst us think that they're right or wrong or up or down or sideways, uh, I understood the purpose of a singleton, though admittedly when I went to implement it earlier today, I had to go look up the docs online okay. to see an implementation form. That's fine, but that's why I'm wanting to talk through the whys yeah. real quick. Anyone who's got this can fast forward and anyone who was struggling with it is sitting in the same boat as you right now. All right. Um, Now, he is, right now you are telling him that he's not going to return anything back. Right. Uh, you've got a method set up here. But he's got to return something. He's got to return, I guess, the instance that we have here. What if we just, what if we don't want a method? What if we just want to call a property? A property. Yeah. I mean, that means we don't need a lot of this stuff. I mean, we're going to need to at least get this, I imagine. Okay. Now. But then that's where this starts to get a little fun. Um, because this is not going to be automatic. No, it's not going to be an automatic property. All right, Nelson, if you want to jump in, 
I'll give Zach. The... Uh, am I making noise? No, no, no. I'm just saying. If you... No, I'm, you've been quiet for a while, and I've been all but beating Zach with a bat. So I'll let you jump in and. Um... Okay, it boils down to a simple fact, and what here's what I'll do. I'm just gonna completely delete all of this stuff. I do not remember the third part of what we need do for you? a singleton. All right, I'll give it to you. You need a property that will return an instance back if the instance has already been created or instantiate this class, store it in that instance, and return it back. Now you know what it does, but do you remember how to make a property? Sure, we've made a few already. Um. I'm at a loss as to what to call it now. Let's just call it instance. Um, what's it griping about now? Go ahead, Nelson. Uh, well, you see that on the other guys, you got to define a type that this property is of. Mm. It, it would be like equivalent to a, a yeah, return type if it were a method. Right. Um, of type can resolve symbol instance. Well, you're not. I, yeah, you haven't completed you the. You haven't uh, finished your line off, here. so uh, d ignore squigglies until you're done with what you think yeah. the line should be. Um, all right. If I was just putting out a, a typical property, and I'll just start there. I mean, I'd have my automatic getter and setter, and then that'd be that. And we don't even need to, that. So, I mean, there's our property. Sweet. So now your your goal is to remove the, the automatic right. ness of this property and replace it with your own implementation of the getter. Because you're not going to give it a yeah, setter. We don't even really need a setter. I realize that. So we can get this out of the way. Let me put this down and kind of inside... And let's see. Um, yep. Now uh, we need. Now just pr pretend you're in like a method that is returning a unit factory. So you can do whatever you want, and at the end you can just call return. Right. Um, it probably doesn't want me to do this. Yeah, that's probably going to gripe at me. Before you even start coding, uh -huh. just in English. What do you want to do in here? Um, I need to establish... Okay, I, I keep thinking. I, I need to have a variable that I can check against to s uh, see if... All right, hang on. You're using I, some of the right language, but see I need, I need to check and see if this damn thing has been instantiated. Okay, where are you going to store this damn thing? Um, I mean, it's going to have to be in a variable. Scroll up some. Um, it's going to have to be probably right here. Yep, that's instance. what that guy's for. So it's not going to let me... Uh, so why would you want to create another variable when we can talk right. to that one right there? What I'm colliding with, and I, I, I'm fine with just saying this, when I looked this up earlier today, there was a different implementation of a singleton that I had started to use, which conflicted with how we did it. Um, it was a different way to do it that didn't use a... It just didn't... Okay, it didn't feel like I was doing exactly this. We'll just leave it at that. Um... Uh, it felt different, and I'm struggling through this, uh, but that's okay. If... If it is null, then we need to uh, create a new unit factor. Oh, hang on. Then instance is going to be equal to new unit factory. And then outside of that, we need to return instance. Okay, there's 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's, there it is. <laughs> but there is a, that's very good. Yeah. Very good for suddenly just everything coming into focus for you. But there's a major problem right now with the ideas right. Mm -hmm. But if I was on the outside world, like I want to get an instance, or you want to get an instance of unit factory somewhere else to work with. Mm -hmm. How are you going to get that instance now? Because we can't say create a new one outside because right. we've sealed that off right so how do we how do we get it i mean i see inside here you're making a new one i mean does this guy need to be public no uh then then i don't know okay since this is not static mm -hmm. at line 45 he's an instanced method which means he only exists if you instantiate this entire class yeah okay but he's the only person who can instantiate it. So, so it's like that's right too. Exactly. Right. Now he's no longer an instance method. Right. He's a class static method. You can now just say unit factory dot instance. Right. And that's what I'm having to come back and try to remember. It's just all the different ingredients. Okay. Now what is this griping about? Non static field instance cannot access. I mean, so this probably needs Very to be static good. as well. Absolutely. Otherwise, that would only exist on each instance yeah. of unit factory. And really, it's just this third part of the recipe I couldn't remember. And I know we did this differently. I'm sure. Um, but I, I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even get fancy. I just want to hit it, and then I'm. I, I don't mind even okay, undoing it. Okay, just don't it. do it. Keep it straightforward, and and yeah. that. But this makes sense to me in terms of what it's doing. Right. The, that's why I wanted you to say in English what you wanted this method to do. Yeah. Because if you say I, I don't know, then there's no way you can code it. Right. Okay, well, that was a fun little battle to, to wage through. All right, so we didn't really need this anymore. Um, though we can get something kind of like it. Um, public, private, read only. Um, what we need to do is get our hands on instance. Let's nuke this out real quick. Yeah, my train's derailed, man. I'm trying to come back around. Um, I know I need to call on instance specifically. So that I can check and see if this is actually going. The giant line that you just removed. Yeah. Why did you remove it? If you undo all that line back... What was your thinking? Why did you remove it? Well, we can't instantiate this anymore. The whole thing was based on the idea that we, we were creating can, a brand new But it factory. can. We still was off new. Right. But we still need to talk to it. Yeah. And it's going to have to be equal to something other than a new unit factory. Um, what happens if you type unit factory dot, dot instance instance? What does that do? That should be talking to directly to that instance. That's all I was trying to remember off the okay. top of my head. And, and I've done it once, once, and I was just trying to pull it back out of my brain. All right. So now that's stored inside of my unit factory, which means this should now be working. That should create a new warrior object. Uh, this should get stored inside of my warrior. I don't really need this anymore. It's just getting in my way. Anybody have any problems with what's going on so far? I mean, really, that whole the last, I guess, 38 minutes or so was really just getting that singleton installed. Um, or I, I don't care. I, I, I don't care if it was the last two hours. Um, so let's I see. want you to really this understand this stuff. My archer, if we're going to do the same thing, and this time we can just call on create archer. And heck with it, I'll just type this one out. Or my cavalry is equal to my unit factory dot create cavalry. 
Okay. Now, for each one of these, uh, creating them is cool, but we also need to uh, handle the second part, which is the and store bit. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to jump down and do a little bit of work down here in Unit Repository real quick. So we need to create our list. Uh, let's see. Huh? <laughs> it was helping you. It was trying there you to. Go. Look what it's telling you at the end of the little pop-up blue thing. It's oh, saying okay. That I was missing. looking here, and I thought it was trying to do some crazy stuff like that, which I'm fine with. The thing no, no, no. That's still telling you. You still have a problem. System.collections.generic.list. It's telling you you're missing that using statement. Hit alt okay. enter. Okay. That's. And now it just added that at the top. And that's, now that's the other thing too. Is the first time I did this, I wasn't. I didn't have ReSharper, which I, I don't think is installed over no, there. No, it's not. I've only <clears throat> bought one copy. I need to get a second right. One. So, um, so I never deleted any of that in the first place. Gotcha. All right. No worries though. We're we're all good. So list and this is actually going to have to hold. Well, it could hold all kinds of things. Um, I want to think that it should hold an I unit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it. Sh so. Uh, list it, and while it can hold all sorts of things in the context of your application, it here. should be a, no, no. That's that's what I mean. Um, it, when I say all sorts of things, it could hold warriors and archers and cavalry members. Those are all I units. So it needs to be of type I unit. Right. Okay. That was my quick abbreviation. Okay. Um, let's call this my unit list. Oh, let's call it unit list. Screw the, the my part. There you go. Unit list. Yes. And this is going to have to be set and equal to, to set equal new to watcher, watcher sound. Sure. Sound. sound. Oh, sorry. List of type I unit. Did he just mute himself out? That's okay. I'm using a bag. Now there is a problem. Now there right? is a problem. Yeah, there is. And, um, yeah, there is. Okay. And, um, yeah, Nelson, is there any Nelson, reason we're getting reason we're our getting voices back so strongly? Back so I think it happens when I mute and unmute. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got... I don't he, know why. He, he has auto volume control set up on... There side. we go. It's sounding better now. Yeah, it just takes a minute to come back down. When you're or, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's going to be one of these. Okay. Um... And I'm just getting used to having to do that with everything, where I haven't always had to do that. Think of it like you're calling that method, the constructor. Right. right. Okay, so he's now creating that. Now, here's the deal. We, um, If I come back all the way around to um, the argument we had way early on in the video, this is another class that I think there should only be one of. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm fine with that being up for contention. Uh, but either way, I need to be able to talk to this particular unit repository. Now, if I did the whole thing, if I if I went back through and did the whole singleton thing where we created a single instance of it, I know that I could talk directly to that particular list. Okay. Could you? Scroll back down for me. Mm. Put your mouse cursor over private. Could well, he, you? He couldn't be private anymore. I mean, he'd have to become... Well, I mean, basically the same thing that instance is up here, which is uh, should be. Ah, I jumped down too far. Private static. He'd have to be public mm. static if I wanted to go. Go ahead, route. Nelson. Feel free to to add in. Well, I, you have to decide what the purpose of your unit repository is. Uh -huh. Um. And uh, kind of uh, when we were talking about uh, over on the whiteboard, uh, you mentioned. The unit repository is responsible for um, storing units and querying on them. Mm -hmm. Exposing a list to everybody else doesn't really make much sense because what you're doing is you're really encapsulating that list. Nobody who talks to unit repository should care about whether it's storing in a list or a database or a file system or a, a network stream or whatever. I'll go with that. So what you're going to want to do is is create a public interface not a not an interface interface but a, you know what, you know what I mean means by of now. access uh, yeah means of access of uh all of the operations that your u unit repository needs to do mm -hmm. and these will be so public, set, exposed right. to the right. world and then and then the, the the next question you have to ask, ask yourself is how are you going to access this class and if you wanted to use the same singleton pattern uh, like you did in the factory that would that would be an answer to that. There's other ways to do it as well. Right. 
So I like Nelson's first idea, which is um, don't even give them implementation, but provide a means for people externally to to do what this thing is supposed to be able to do. Well, um, put put some comments, put some slash marks in. This thing provides functionality for slash slash. Add a unit. Well, see, that's that's what something that I've been kind of going back. I guess this is where that functionality is going to be. So, add uh, units. This is kind of like it, this is like your data store. Delete what units. what kind of things does that provide to um, you? Adding, deleting. Let's just stick with that for now. Or let's just say list all. List all could be one. So these are the things that we need to do. Okay, fine. Um, all right. Okay. So these are going to have to become public methods that I can draw on that utilize the list that we just created. So, uh, man, I, I really need some... Uh, I need some Bon Jovi playing right now. <laughs> All right, public. Uh, I'm trying to think. I can't imagine a return type right now. If I'm just wrong about that, I'll just fix it later. Um, if you don't mind. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and I'm only saying this because I want you to get into a habit of it, even though we're not sticking strict to any type of design, um, true design mentality throughout this. But... What do you want add unit to do? What is its response? I want it to add uh, whatever we just created into our list. I mean, okay. if we just created a warrior, it needs to be added to the list. If we just created a... And with that being the case, it sounds like it shouldn't return anything back. Okay. And, th and that's where my, my brain goes. It's I just, understand. You I, keep, I keep thinking that at some point in the future, I might go like, oh, well, I guess this thing should be able to return this, that, or the I other. Know. I'm just, I'm trying to help you see how... So I don't have to ask that question anymore. Instead of sounding like you're not sure... Oh. What is the responsibility of this method? And this thing's going to take in an I unit, um, which we'll just call <laughs> unit. And we won't even, I'm not even going to worry about functionality right this second. I'll get to that. Though I imagine the functionality is going to be really easy. I would I would do this. What do you want to do? I would um, I would just define these two. Add and delete. Yep, add and delete. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. Except watch watch your um, again. This is going to come back to the same question. What your comment is? Delete units. Yeah. The method name is delete unit. Yeah. So what is the what is the responsibility of this method? What is its purpose well it's gonna it's there to remove entries in the list is what it amounts to whatever's contained in that list and I don't mean entries because that suggests we're just looking at references to things that are uh, that are just <coughs> excuse me that are somewhere else it's doing exactly what it says now I would like the ability to be able to tell it to delete more than one unit can like can if you don't mind can I just have you make this something simple N name it remove all units that's fine all right. Well, so we'll we'll still leave the comment delete units anyway. Yep, that works. And fine. Um, can I still just say delete all units if you want to instead of remove? Okay. And then it in that case, there's nothing that we really need to pass in. Very good. It's just if there's something in there, we're going to detonate the nuke and take it out. Very good. Uh, I didn't mean to click on that, so go away. Okay. Um, so these guys, I'll just leave by the wayside for now. We can get to those later. Ah. Damn, sharper. Okay, so um, let's just start here. So we've got unit list, and he. This is only griping because we haven't done anything with it, or no? Okay, it's just the upper lower case bit. Yeah, well, actually, it was two things. It's never used, and the upper lower case. Bit. All right, and since it's private, I'll go with that. We'll make it lower case, and the never used bit is going to be taken care of here in just a moment. So uh, let's see. Like right now. Like right now, this is exactly what we're going to do. Um, I'm just making sure that I'm down with that. Let's see. Units list dot add. And this should be unit.
I mean, awesome. Um, now down here, unit list dot. I guess that's gonna have to be clear. I've never done it before, but I mean, it makes sense. Now, let's see, this is where things get a little, little bit interesting. And it's, hang on, let me just make sure that I know what we're doing. We need some place where we can actually get that ID for each one of these guys set when they're in the list. And I re I'm not sure if we've done that yet. Okay. Well, I mean, currently, none of your state is being set. Right. So, let's see, we need to get that taken care of. Um... Let me see. Bear with me just a second while I poke around for just a moment. If uh, I, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. I wouldn't jump to that. And here's why: mm. you were working at a, a higher level where yeah. you were just getting a unit, and then you had mentioned that you need to store the unit, and you just set up a means. And we've now done that. Well, you put functionality in place that would handle that, but if we, we need to where we call create on them it way up here. Is that yeah. what you're saying? When we create these, so we have yeah. my warrior, my archer, they're still not being stored. Right. Now, um, earlier on, we had talked about also implementing a, uh, a second singleton here with the unit repository. Mm -hmm. Is there any global complaints with doing that again? I mean, you'll always hear a complaint from me. Oh, are there any relevant global it. complaints? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, if, you're, if you're determined to use it in the factory, it would make sense to use it in the repository as okay. well. Well then, um, I don't. I, I feel kind of bad because I know we fought for this, but I just want to scan this just kind of one good time, and then just see if I can shoot back through it, even if I struggle a little bit. That's fine. Um, now the order in which we put these is it? It is there any f um, interesting feedback on the order in which we should put these? Because I mean, I've got my little yes. private list here. Should I leave that at the very top and then just move down from there? Do you have any thoughts on that that you can impart? Um, I put private static, then private, then constructors, then public methods, then private protected methods, and public really wish private I methods. Taken notes when he spent all it. But th you know, if you got a video, rewind. That's awesome. I I did hear that private static would be first, and I think that's what we needed here. So private static. I know it's going to be of type unit repository. What does the uh, MS spec say? Jason. Oh heavens! You know, to be dead honest with you, for that particular thing, I don't know. Um, so let's see. <laughs> repository, and we can just call this. I don't want to start using the same name everywhere. I mean, I'm, I'm in a different class, so technically I can. It seems. Yes. Instance. So we'll just go with that. Yes, I know it's not used everywhere. Let me make sure that's what it's complaining about. Okay, once lowercase instance. I don't want to have to look back up to the top. So I'm going to say this is just going to be lowercase. Any time we're dealing with a private. I'm trying to remember for certain that it needs to be private. And so I had, I had a, a little mental dialogue that everybody else missed. I was like, okay, does anybody else need to talk to it? No. Okay, private's good. Let's go ahead and make it lowercase. Okay. As opposed to going back over and changing it to public so it could stay uppercase. Because if it's public, then anyone can talk to it and set it to null later if they want right. to. Right. Now. Breaking everything. We need our basically vacant private constructor private blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> in creating a constructor does the constructor have the ability to return something back in the way the constructor is written I do not remember I was just throwing that out there um, He doesn't really do anything right now. Okay, great. Now, um, backing up to here. Now we need that property that does all the really cool magic tricks. And this guy actually is public. And he is static, so that we can access him. Good. And what we call him is almost irrelevant. Um, this is the Well, it is, it is actually relevant. Because you're using the singleton pattern twice in your code, yeah. it's important to stay consistent. Good to know. Then I'll go with that. Just from uh, discoverability. Yeah. And let's see. Now, why does it do that? Uh, uh. Hey. What's the... You, you gave a name, but you haven't told it the type it's dealing with. It's, oh, okay. No, you're right. You're right.
sister declaration. Yeah, I think I realized that. I was just help, helping you out. Yeah, yeah. I'm just... Uh, sometimes it, it's like it's helping me a little too soon, so it just gets me a little worried earlier than I should be. Okay, um... If... Since is equal to no... Ah! See, we get to make all these great sound effects in this series. Alright. And there's my OCD kicking in. I, I still don't understand spaces, Jason. I don't think I ever will. Good. Huh. Hey, I'm just using default, okay? I didn't go in and specifically tell it to do that. The bottom line is I don't hit space, space, space. I just hit tab. Now, if it uses tab character, spaces, whatever the heck is default on it's what it's using. Repository. And then we need to return it. <laughs> now, what are you griping about? Oh, yeah, this silly thing. Okay, I think that's it. And that's just, of course, just going to gripe and say you could turn this to the the null coalescence expression we discussed earlier. That's not a problem. Is anything barking at me yet? No. Okay. So, now let me ask you this. Um, my Sounds list... Sounds like Nelson's sword fighting with somebody. Yeah, he, he is, I'm sure. <laughs> just to pass the time. My, uh... My list, I mean, is it okay where it is? Does it need to be created inside the constructor or anything silly like that? Nah, well, eh, I, I could tell you about how the c -sharp specification um, determines when to actually execute code. Uh, di also, uh, it, there's, it's different, but it's the same, and it's fine. <laughs> Generally, you won't see me doing that. I usually instantiate in the con constructor mm -hmm. just to be consistent and also because... Uh, like I said, the C sharp, uh, the C sharp, or the uh, CLR actually um, in, uh, initializes those in backwards order in the inheritance hierarchy. But uh, whatever. Okay. I, I usually just put it in the constructor to be consistent, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, especially because you're not using inheritance. Okay. I mean, in the back of my head, it seemed like it should be in the constructor, though. If you ask me why, I don't think I could actually tell you. But what you've got will work just okay. fine. And, and I'm happy to just go with that. Okay. So, so why would that go red down below? I see red squiggles. Um, unit repository cannot access private constructor unit repository here because we're handling it right here. We don't need to do that anymore. We, mm, the did. way that we've got this set up, we don't need to do. Good. Or. Um, hang on. Okay. Give me just a second. Yeah, it's it's coming clear to you. Uh, well, we're. We're grabbing this in the constructor. It seems like we should be grabbing it the same way we're doing this. And and we just... I mean, we can keep the, the constructor if we really want to, but if it's not doing anything, we can just take it out and use the That's default right. one. Um, I said so, it was coming... I, I suddenly realized you were just about to nail it. So, I mean, I, I'm happy with just stealing code, you know, so I don't have to type any extra whatever. So, uh, this would be of type unit repository... And, you know, we just call this my unit repository. And this could be unit repository.instance. No squigglies. No squigglies. So, um, we should be able to now say my unit repository. Done. This is where it starts to get really fun. Uh, let's say. Add unit. Oh, dude, come on. Hit. Help me. <clears throat> what in the world? You have to hit that down arrow. I thought I did, but I guess I didn't. Add unit. And my warrior. Who is a unit, so that should work. And then, boom. Right. On the very last line, so go uh -huh. ahead and do that one. Yep. Now, how could you just make all that on one line for the very last one? Let 
Let me try this. And if I'm wrong, I'm just wrong. Oh, you're so close. You're... Yeah, wait, wait, it's not done. Ding, 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 ding. But, but I do want to, I do want to point out why that doesn't work. And that's because VAR statements are... Right, uh, it didn't, well, well, it didn't they, make any sense to even have a VAR statement at that point. Yeah, they're, uh, well, they are statements, they're not expressions, oh. because they don't actually evaluate into anything. I mean... So, yeah, that's why you couldn't have it. Good job, I just wanted to toss that out there. Just no, to... no, it makes sense. I'm glad you did. I mean, once you asked, I realized I could do it, but up to that point, I just didn't stop and think. No, I would have yet. actually rather seen you do it both ways. Yeah. And now I'm going to change them all. That whatever makes you happy here. I mean, I understand this is the first serious anything you've ever written in C Sharp. Okay. Um, all beatboxing aside, I th that's doing what we need it to do so far, as I can tell. Um, now we are at two hours and okay. we still need to put in delete and then we've got to put in all of our uh, input manager code and test this out do we want to just keep on rolling it's between you and Nelson Nelson do you want to just keep on rolling I didn't know if, if uh, I'm keeping you away from you know the real world and I understand the real world is out there well, well if you think that waiting maybe a day might, might solidify yeah. what you're what you're doing I'm, I'm fine with that fine. yeah that that's fine then um I think we're at a, a decent a decent stopping point if for no other reason then I'm not getting uh, any errors popping up so at least I'm not leaving people hanging with anything that's exploding um, though you are Nelson going to have to kind of hold off on telling me because I mean I, I know we mentioned earlier that we're gonna wait until I'm kind of done with this and then we'll go about ways that it could be you know done differently we're gonna have to wait until the end to do that right and just this is Nelson. I'm talking to you now. Do you see why I think that's valuable? Yes. If Zach can shoehorn this into working the way he thinks it needs to, there's already several things that I'm pretty sure you're going to do, and Zach's going to go. I just didn't think of it that way. Yeah. And and that's going to be really. Well, what's good. already happened a couple of times tonight? It's, um, and it, it's things we've covered. It's just remembering all of the tricks that you've learned no, and no, when to implement no. them. No, you're, you're, What we're getting into is OOD. Mm. Um, we're we're really getting into object oriented design, um, I, and that I'm stepping outside of just the idea of design patterns, but just object oriented design right. as a whole, and why you'd want to do things certain ways and I think after you've put this together because you're on the track of having something that will work yeah and then when Nelson demonstrates some other ways to handle these I think you're going to get a much greater appreciation for that oh yeah I'm actually more excited about hearing that than I'm finishing this little but, app but I already see how the app's gonna finish at this well point. I uh, but I just want you to get it done but I so. know I know that I know that <laughs> And I will. It's just I looked at the clock. And I was uh, like, yeah, we've, we've been here for like two hours. We've right. been jamming for a while. Again, this this was just really a, a knowledge review for for. That's the beautiful thing about these videos. People can fast forward through them. They mm -hmm. don't have to watch them. They can just hit stop. And some people, and, you know, I realize this is probably going to be more useful to those of you who are, um, are a bit closer down to my level, which is exactly what I inferred at the very beginning of this video. Where if you've been watching a lot of these uh, Nelson's Corner videos and you've had no problem and you've been picking up a few things and you, you know, you're already kind of a, uh, an experienced programmer, this might have been more irritating than anything to watch someone kind of struggle through it. But and then if again, that person complains online... Then again, maybe not. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's possible that because, you know, even though you've already done this before, you might have seen me struggle through something make, that made you go, oh yeah, they could have just done this and that you know, might solidify something later on for you. And I hope that's the case. I Who hope knows? everybody can it's pull not, something out it's of It's not... None of this is wasted content for the simple fact that this was all recorded real time, live, and on the fly. And you're, you're, you know, really kind of uh, working your brain overtime right now, and you're you're exercising it. You're, oh, I need a drink. You're, <laughs> you're, you're learning this stuff, and that's that's very beneficial to all of us here. So, Nelson, man, thanks a lot, and a, a special thank you for sitting on your hands and biting your tongue because I. And I really appreciate all of the insights that you did provide, and thank you for working with me. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I think then that is going to wrap things up for this 
Uh, uh, first knowledge review. First we'll, knowledge yeah, part hot one seat and, knowledge review. And we'll do hot seat knowledge review number two. <laughs> um, maybe tomorrow if Nelson's got some free time. But uh, or, or very soon. As soon as we can. As soon as we can. So with that, thank you guys very much, and we're out of here. Bye, Bye. everyone. Night, folks. Night.